Who else is sick and tired of losing their data? Whether you're a photographer, filmmaker, or just looking for a better way to store your data, this video is for you. No backup solution is completely foolproof. Hard drives are bound to fail, and the best thing we can do is replicate our data in enough places to mitigate that risk. In this video, we'll talk about direct attached storage solutions like these external hard drive options to connect to your computer for backing up. If you're interested in network attached options, check out the video at the link above. So let's start with a few basics and then I'll give specific backup solutions for small to large size setups. Backup method 321 rule. The 321 rule suggests storing three copies of your data on two different media types with one copy stored off site. This has been the gold standard until recently when 32110 and 432 have become more secure. However, we'll keep things simple because the best solution is the simplest and most seamless one that you can actually understand and keep track of. So for this video, we'll keep three data copies on two different media types and one offsite in the cloud. For starters, you should always keep a backup image of your entire computer so that if your computer fails, you can always boot from that image using the backup. You can use Time Machine for a Mac, or Windows has a built-in backup utility, or even a third-party software like Acronis to accomplish this. You can add a partition to your backup drive to do this, but my recommendation is just to have a dedicated drive for your image backups. If all of your data, photos, and files are in this system image, well, then you're already almost covered in terms of proper backup. You just need to add one more offsite, and for this, you can jump to the cloud backup portion of this video. If you don't need a ton of storage or speed, but just want the reassurance of having your data backed up, then you'll want to get an external drive that you can back up all of your data to. If you're storing all of your data only on this drive and not on your computer, then you'll want to have a second external drive as a backup. Keep in mind, you'll be limited to the speed of these drives, so you might want to opt for an SSD like the SanDisk Professional G40 if you are editing directly off this drive. To keep backups synced together, you can use software like FreeSync or ChronoSync, but more on this later. As we start getting into medium-sized setups, single hard drives simply don't offer enough capacity. So there are a few ways to combine hard drive capacities for more overall storage, speed improvements, and redundancy. And yes, I'm talking about RAID, which stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. And everyone kind of recoils when they hear the word RAID, but once you understand the basics of it, I promise you, you're gonna be just as excited as I am about it. You don't necessarily have to go into RAID, you could just do JBOD or just a bunch of disks, or span all of the disks so that your computer sees them as one volume. This can work for many people, but if you're looking for those added speed advantages, redundancy, and tolerance to hard drive failure, then you want to consider RAID. There are multiple RAID configurations, such as RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, or 10. Some RAID configurations offer fault tolerance, which means if a hard drive fails, you simply replace that drive and it will rebuild the data on that drive. It's kind of like magic. RAID can be complicated, but here's a simple rundown of some popular RAID configurations. RAID 0 offers fast speed advantages as it stripes data across all of your disks. However, it offers no drive failure fault tolerance, so if a drive fails, the data on the entire array would most likely be unrecoverable. RAID 1 mirrors your data from one disk or disks to the other, acting as an exact mirror. It offers fault tolerance, but no speed advantages. This also means that you'll get half the capacity, since half will be used as a mirror. RAID 5 requires at least three disks, and it stripes data across all of the disks and also has a parity disk, which means that it can tolerate one drive failure, and because of this, you would lose the capacity of one drive, since that portion is dedicated as a parity. RAID 6 requires at least four drives, and it operates in a similar way to RAID 5, but can tolerate two hard drive failures, reducing the overall capacity by two drives. RAID 10 is sort of a cross between 1 and 0. It requires at least 4 drives and mirrors data across the disk, dedicating half of your drives to a mirror image, which means you'll get half capacity. RAID 10 stripes data within the mirror, so it does have speed advantages as well. Many photographers, filmmakers, and production houses use RAID 5 and 6 for their speed advantages as well as fault tolerance. And should a drive fail, the array is still usable while hot swapping in a new drive, albeit at a lower performance. These forms of RAID are also more practical as they utilize more of the overall capacity. And RAID 10 is for those who want the most amount of fault tolerance, while RAID 0 is for those who kind of want to live on the edge since it offers no fault tolerance. Now I'll include a link in the description to a RAID calculator that'll help you decide which direction to go when considering capacity and number of drives. 
There's two types of RAID systems, software and hardware. Software is generally less expensive but does take up some CPU resources, while hardware RAID has this built into it, like the G-RAID 2, which comes ready to go in RAID 0, and can also be configured to RAID 1, or mirroring, or JBot. For even more options and capacity, this 4-bay G-RAID shuttle from SanDisk Professional comes in RAID 5 out of the box, so you can get going right away. However, it also supports RAID 0, 1, and 10 to provide a versatile and flexible storage solution. However, if you need an even larger solution, this is the G-RAID 8-bay shuttle, and it has eight six terabyte drives in it. This one has four six terabyte drives for a total of 24 terabytes. This is a total of 48 terabytes. This one has the added benefit of being able to set it up in RAID 6 for two hard drive failure fault tolerance. For software RAID options, I have this OWC Thunder Bay with eight bays set up in RAID 5 using OWC soft RAID solution. It's also super intuitive, keeps track of your hard drive's health, and is easy to set up. Another great thing about software RAID is that you don't necessarily need an enclosure. You can even use separate external drives that you might have laying around. However, for any RAID configuration you're using, you're gonna wanna use the same drives across any array. So the same capacity, speed, and even the same technology when it comes to either mechanical drives or SSDs. These G-RAID enclosures are hardware RAID, but with SanDisk Professional software, it's super easy to configure into multiple RAID configurations. And for these three hard drive enclosures, since they are in RAID 5, they can afford to lose one drive without losing any data. Since RAID redundancy isn't an actual backup, having two of these enclosures is a good idea, which could be a slower one since the second one would just be a duplicate. Or you can opt for an 8-bay enclosure and create two separate arrays within the same enclosure. You can keep all of your files synchronized through software like FreeSync or ChronoSync and enable it to run the backup on the schedule. You can also set the software to keep multiple versions of any changes you make to your backup, just in case you want to revert to any past changes. For those who like to take their work on the go, you can always edit off of your computer and back that up to an external drive, or you can edit directly off of an external drive. Of course, if it's fast enough, the SanDisk Professional SSD is fantastic for editing off of because it doesn't have any data throttling, which is an issue that plagues many other SSDs on the market. Then you could use the FreeSync software or other similar software to back that up to your RAID enclosure whenever you're home from traveling, something that I personally do since I'm frequently going back and forth. It's also a good idea to keep track of the health of your hard drives to confirm everything is running smoothly and prevent failures. The acronym SMART technology can be used on Windows using command prompt or third-party software and on disk utility for Mac. And finally, whichever solution you go with, you should back it up to the cloud. This is your offsite copy. If you could have another physical offsite copy, that's ideal, but opting for a cloud solution like Backblaze, Carbonite, etc., is the final step in our backup solution. Backblaze even offers versioning history that allows you to revert to past file changes should you need it. The added benefit of all of this is that you'll have your data at your fingertips anywhere in the world. However, for network attached options, tune into the video above where we break down some simple setup options to attach your data to the network. Well, that was a long-winded video, I know, but it's a topic we're really passionate about at b &H. As you go out and take amazing photos and videos, we wanna make sure that you have them for years to come. If you have any questions on some of the awesome hard drive or enclosures that we talked about here today, be sure to leave a comment down below. My name is Matt, and thanks for watching.